Now, I would consider myself a Sims 2 stan fan all the way through, that every time I go on Mod The Sims, I always find something new. And for the past couple of months, I've been trying to dabble into other custom neighborhoods that people make just to kind of reintroduce myself to The Sims franchise again, but also have fun with storytelling, drama, and family gameplay. And a couple of months ago, we downloaded and reviewed a save file neighborhood made by Silky Sims called Service Area, which I have a current Let's Play going on, but literally the other day I found a custom neighborhood on Mod The Sims made by the Nord Mead and it's called Silent Peaks. Now personally for me when I think of those two like words Silent Peaks I think of Silent Hill and Twin Peaks. One's a movie and one's a TV show from like the late 90s or so and both are very mysterious have a lot of drama and it's very chaotic and I thought Sims 2 with those two kind of like inspired things in my mind, I have to do a review. So before we even get into the game, I want to show you the description of the neighborhood so that way you can kind of get an idea of what's happening in Silent Peaks. But for the general description of Silent Peaks, and it says Silent Peaks is a sleepy place surrounded by dense foresty landscape and misty mountains all across the river. A small town lifestyle around here always granted peace for local sims. However, something has changed. Some people whisper about the so-called missing sim incident, yet no one has investigated that case. What is the reason behind things getting creepier and creepier? Will the residents care to reunite and connect the dots, eventually solving the mystery of Silent Peaks? Who's brave enough to finally break the silence? Were you silent or silenced? There's a difference. However, I'm thinking every single sim in this town was silenced by money or something. Either way, I need to read more about this neighborhood, about all the sims, but let's go ahead and go into the game. I have to say when looking at this neighborhood for the very first time, it looks pretty fantastic from all the trees to the houses, community lots, the road layout, the general decoration and dedication that they took to make the save file very personalized with a storyline that I'm fully immersed in. And knowing that it's their very first neighborhood they've ever created in The Sims 2, I applaud thee. Because friend, you did that. And I hope you do it again. But if you're watching this video, hello, hi, you're doing great work, keep it up. I hope you make another one or at least a sub neighborhood for Silent Peaks or just a completely new one with your creative brain. But this little side over here is like the general like main area. And then over here is the countryside of Silent Peaks. Now there are quite a few residents in this town, but there's also a bunch of like empty houses to live in, apartments, community lots. And I'm thinking like, where do I even begin? Because like this general hub is so interesting to me. Like there's everything that you need and more some. Like you got a leisure center, you got a park, you've got a marketplace, another little marketplace cove. This is a town hall and it looks so cool. We have fitness center, a bunch of apartments on the sides. And then I think there's like a restaurant right here. There's even like some parks and things on the other side, a graveyard. Oh my gosh. I need to know about these townies first and foremost. So this is a general overview that we read before on the website. Okay, I wanna start with this one. After Leandra and Alfred fell in love, they decided to create a safe loving family. Alfred always brought the biggest amount of toys and Leandra made the best spaghetti that she could ever take. However, since her unexpected disappearance, however, since her unexpected disappearance, the children keep making things at home even more chaotic. Where's Leandra and why did she leave in the first place? Wasn't she happy enough with this perfect family she established? <gasps> Where is Leandra? Ooh, okay. High school sweethearts Eloise and Charlie do their best to provide for their daughters. Jessica is known as a shiny example of the family, while Jenny doesn't care for much outside of the porch. Is there anything that could affect young sisters, maybe even changing their lifestyles forever? Perhaps it's the people they'll meet on their way. Oh my gosh. It's not easy being a single mother to twins, especially when they're a pair of rebellious teenagers. Majors. Arabelle's been miserable since her husband left her for another more attractive woman. Meanwhile, Lita and Valorin don't give a flying nanny about her trials, dedicating themselves to partying all night long. My gosh. 
Lordy Lou. Oh, oh my gosh, there's more. The Greenbergs welcomed Rose's new girlfriend and her son very warmly. It's been even more pleasant around the house with their company. Despite being a mother, Amber doesn't seem very sure about commitment she has faced while her partner already wonders about making things official. What will become of their relationship? Oh my gosh. This has to be Amber and her child and then Rosa and her two parents. Rosa is like, marry me, love me, let's be together. And then Amber's like, I don't know about this relationship. I'm like not too into it. I just like left another relationship to join this one and I don't feel wanted at home. But for the next family, we have a very interesting one with apparently with little Miss Amber and whoever this guy is. First a pregnancy without marriage, changing her partners from one to another, and now same gender relationship. Old Jack couldn't be more disappointed of his daughter, so he kicked her out. Now he has to handle things on his own. Perhaps there's a chance to realize he might have made a mistake to reunite with Amber and his grandson instead. <sighs> The next family is a group of aspiring stars have befriended each other as they graduate at university, sharing a spot to live in. Every one of them is planning their way to become a renowned artist. Will the chemistry and tension between all of them enhance or deteriorate their career path? Four friends living in one apartment building? That's not suspicious at all. It's giving friends, but it's also giving Travis Scott, Liberty Lee, and Summer Holiday vibes a lot's going on, but I'm invested. But for the next family, we have Bernard, who is known to be a local paranoid. His weird behaviors got way more intense since he moved out to live on his own. He claims to know a secret of the disappearances around town. What will it take to convince the residents of Silent Peaks that Bernard has already discovered the truth? As long as what he saw was really the truth. You know, honestly, it's giving like that weird Strange Town vibe. They would all be great friends if you moved to Strange Town instead of Silent Peaks. But the last and final family is we have Lizbeth. Lizbeth's completely devoted to her scientific research, somehow neglecting her teenage child. While Robin is trying to find a path of their own, hanging out with fellow teen musicians, the mother is said to be the most suspicious woman around town. Where did that gossip come from? Is there really something Lizbeth is hiding? What does she know about the missing sim incident? Oh, 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 this is so cool. But I want to go through some of the lots in this neighborhood because I think it's very important to see the general creativity of the buildings because the nerd meat, because the nerd meat made everything themselves, but also had some play testers to test things out here and there. And so I think I want to start with the general main hub area and go to like a community lot because I think it'll be more interesting that way. And then we'll dive deep into some of the households and see what their memories, relationships, and all that fun jazz. And I think I want to start with the Silent Peak School because one, I love school when it's convenient for me, but here in Silent Peaks, there's only one school, so everyone must come here. So let's see what this looks like. So this right here is the public school of Silent Peaks. And honestly, we don't have a functioning school system in The Sims 2 unless you have like mods and stuff. So I would treat this as like a community center for anyone and everyone that wants to come over here and have some fun. But I love how unique and cool it is. From the building structure to the playground in the back, we have a slide, a little jungle gym, some chess tables, and then basketball courts on the other side. But for the interior, it's a three level building. And so on the third level, we have the cafeteria with the bathrooms and some live entertainment. Oh, I miss having a drum set and like the general guitar over here. So like you would eat up here and then like your students could like perform or do whatever, like a little open mic night type of thing. But I love the upstairs. We have the bathrooms over here. And then on the second level, we have all of the general activities for the students, the arts room. I'm pretty sure this might have to be like a little library over here. We have, I guess, another little hallway study area. Ooh, kind of like a gym workout room, activity room for the kids or some type of like, I don't know, activity. And this has to be like some type of um activity room over here. We have the lockers in the hallway. 
I like that they use a platform to add this little general structure to the little bay window area and then adding some plants to it. That's a good idea. And then on the first floor, I would say this is for like arts and crafts for like elementary school students. This is a general classroom over here. The foyer area. Is this like... Oh, uh, wait, what? I have never seen this before in my life. What? What is that? I have never seen this object before in my entire life. Oh, that is so cool. So this has to be like a little science room because you have ants, you have your little, that's a scope type of thing. And then over here is another general classroom. That is so cool. Wow. Okay, that's very, very nice. So after looking at the public school, I had to definitely go over to the leisure center because it caught my eye from the map view. And I have to say, the nerd Mead made every single build. Their brain is out of this world. They're so creative that I'm like, I'm the worst builder in the entire world. I don't know how you did this, but please teach me your ways because I would love to learn how to build this good. Because the Leisure Center has everything you could think of. It has a wedding venue, has a restaurant, a clothing store. It has like a little entertainment area to do like your cards and your pool and even more stuff. Like every single build has their own unique story that you could really fully immerse yourself into the set. You would never be bored. And I wish I could tour every single build and I probably will at some point, but I want to pick a few that I think are really, really cool to me that caught my eye, especially from the map view. But on the third level, this is where you can do your card playing and your pool. You've got some bathrooms over here that are all gender neutral, which is very, very helpful. And then on the second floor, you have your mini restaurant. And like looking at every single build before like making this video, I'm just like, how? It's well decorated. It's very cohesive with the color scheme. And each and every sim has their own unique way of like going to this venue or that venue or doing these type of things. There's some teenagers who love partying. There's some sims that just like being by themselves who are single, paranoid. There's like so many cool things. And I love this kitchen. So that way your sims can like make all their food for the people who have come over here to do their restaurant type stuff. We have your bar over here. And then in this side venue right here is the wedding venue. You have your foyer, your bathrooms, your main hub area to eat all the cake and stuff. And this is where you get married. And honestly, I literally want to come here and have all of my sims get married or make my own little clothing store, wedding venue, restaurant type of build. Because having a multifunctional lot is so useful instead of having like one singular lot and then travel to this one, into that one, into that one. But when it's all in one lot, it's more convenient, cheaper, and a lot safer, I feel. But I like this little wedding venue over here. And then on the first floor, we have more entertainment stuff. I don't really use this train set that often in The Sims 2, but it comes in handy for any Sim children or teenagers or whoever that like model trains. So we have this little like little library reading room. I guess this is like another part of the wedding venue downstairs. This is where you can also eat your food to get a reservation, a little cafe. And then over here is the clothing store. It's very groovy because this wallpaper is from the teen style stuff stuff pack. And I love that stuff pack, by the way, it's very nice. But the clothing store is so nice. It's so simple. Like I don't think a lot of bills have to be so over the top when when cluttering it to give it that personality. But in The Sims 2, you just need like the bare minimum of having bits and bops, like your clothing racks, your bean bags, your nice little decorative walls, and your wallpaper, some plants, some curtains, and you call it a day. But it has so much uniqueness that I want to come here all the time. And then back here, you have your outdoor to do some chess. And this must be like a performing arts type of object for musicians or magicians. And then you are at my Shuno game of the century. But looking at it from the exterior on the back side, it just looks so good. And even like the neighborhood itself just looks so nice. Like, can I live here? Mostly rent free, so I don't have to pay anything, but it's so well decorated. Overall, this build looks fantastic. I want to look at another community lot before we transition over to like the residential houses and all the townies and their memories and stories. But let's look at the next community lot. As for the next build, I want to stay in this general area because it's so cool and there's so much to look at. 
that I decided that I want to look at the Picky Diners restaurant because one, I love food and so do my Sims, but I also like having my Sims own their own restaurant. And for the description of this restaurant, it says, there's no fancier place to dine around the town. Established over 100 years ago by the Shelby family, when restaurants always serve the highest quality of meals, even to the pickiest of their diners. And I love that. Picky eaters, picky diners. One has one style, one has the other. Like these two buildings are not the same whatsoever and I love it because this style reminds me of Paris and this style reminds me of Olive Garden in like an American way because American Olive Garden is definitely different than Italian Olive Garden, which I feel like they don't have, but do have, but don't call it Olive Garden. You know what I mean. Either way, it's two restaurants on one lot and I love that. And plus you can pick where you want to sit in the Sims 2 restaurants. So let's say you have your Sims wanting to sit upstairs near the bathroom, which is very nasty. A lot of smell, smell, not good for the pasta. However, on the second floor, it opens up even more. You have your fancier second floor with a little pool table on the side. And then on this side is the other restaurant but this one has like a little musical karaoke stand and that's so cool. Like I love karaoke in The Sims and every iteration of The Sims, karaoke was my favorite thing to do. Embarrassing your Sims, taking photos, videos, everything. But this is like a family diner where anyone can come here, even like family of like eight, 10, 12, 100, or just one can just have fun but still also enjoy the musical side of themselves. But on the first floor, you have your main hub where you enter in, pick your seating. You have a bar over here to see what they're cooking and how they're preparing it. And then this side is more like so open, so family friendly, but also yet very fancy. It kind of reminds me of like another family restaurant I've been to before, like Olive Garden, Red Lobster, Bob Evans, Red Robins. You know, like those type of like family restaurants, but I've never been into like a three story restaurant before, but I would love to. And you know what? This kind of reminds me of Cheesecake Factory. It might be all the red and like the orange color scheme that I'm getting, but I love the kitchen for all your servers. Like look how detailed like this stand is. You have your pots and pans, your oil, your spices, your books, your plates, your everything. Like, I love watching the Bear TV show on Hulu FX, and it's so cool. Cooking shows are always my favorite thing to watch because they're high intensity, so unique, so different. The food is always great. It's always different, and you never know what to expect, whether it's going to be good or bad, based on the judging, but also based on how each and every, like, person works together as a team or just by themselves. But it's just so good. Like, I just cannot wrap my brain around how this is like The Sims 2. It is The Sims 2, but it's like, I cannot believe the nerd mead you did a fantastic job on this build. However, I do want to transition over to that one family that has that missing wife with the single father, with the two kids. I want to know a little bit more because their memories might tell me something that I'm not seeing from like the map view or the general story from the journal. So the Wallace family still lives in this general area of Silent Peaks, but they live in these condos called Honeyside Condos and only have 1,800 simoleons to their name. They have two family friends called the Sutherland household and then the Hawk household with Lisbeth and her teenage daughter. And honestly, I find with like Sims 2 Sims are always so interesting and unhinged based on like the personality and also their zodiac sign is how they're going to act day in and day out. But looking at their general condo, the size of it is just so interesting to me because it's multiple condos on one lot because the Wallace family lives on the right side in the middle no one lives there and on the left side no one lives there but each condo has their own individual pricing so you're not breaking the bank but you're also like not living dirt cheap poor however the Wallace family they're a little bit dirt cheap poor but we're not going to worry about that until a little bit later but we have Moran's bedroom over here we have the parents bedroom their bathroom we have Freddy's bedroom downstairs, their little dining room, and then their living room, and then their kitchen. Now, each Sim has very different memories and very different bios, but I want to look at Alfred's bio because he knows a little bit more than the kids do, and he might reveal some secrets that we need to know more about why the wife is gone. But he is a Gemini, 
And he's semi sloppy, semi neat, somewhat shy, semi outgoing, very active, very serious, and semi grouchy. But for Alfred, his bio, it says Alfred always wanted to be the good guy as his parents taught him. He met Lindra and was there for her when she needed that, and soon enough they fell in love. Life has been beautiful until she disappeared. Alfred wants to stay strong and ambitious for himself and for his family. It's harder than he would like not having Lindra by his side when he needs her and seeing Marn rebel and Freddy simply getting lost. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I feel very bad and sad for all these Sims because they all have very different like backstories that are very happy or sad depending on where they are at in their life. He does have a career. He's at level four of the medicine career as an intern. He has to work on his skills to get promoted to level five. His memories, however, are quite interesting. Lindra ran away. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we have Freddie Jr. Lilith died. Edward died. Those were his parents, I'm assuming. Freddie grew up well, taught how to walk, talk, and had a good, learn how to, and taught Moran how to study became good friends with all of his kids. You know, teenage daughter grew up well. He got promoted. And then Freddie aged up from a toddler to a child. Jenny grew up badly. Jenny Sutherland? What a shame. It's never been good to see someone wasting their life. <gasps> and then Lindra ran away. Wow, I guess we should have treated the Sim better. I never knew how they felt so bad. And then we lost the best friend relationship with our own daughter. And then we met this lady. Hmm. Arcadia Bay. It's giving Life is Strange, and I like that. I love Life is Strange. But our family tree, our sister is Eloise Sutherland. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's why we know Charlie and the other people. So Jenny is our niece, and so is Jessica. I love that. And so with these two Sims, Alfred and Lindra, She's still alive somewhere in the world. We just could have found out where. Her parents are Silas and Marette Mayfield, who are actually buried in the graveyard in Silent Peaks. Her brother is Anthony Mayfield. Very interesting. Okay. They have two kids. And then their parents are Lilith and Edward Walls, who are also buried in the graveyard in Silent Peaks. But this is very, very interesting. I love that little family tree. But for the teenager, what's her relationship with her father? Very awful, alongside with her own brother. But she has a crush on Robin Hawk, who lives on the other side of town with her mother, Lizbeth. Okay. Has a little crush crush with Miss old Robin Hawk. But what's your bio? What is, yeah, what is actually Miss Thang's bio? I need to know. Oh, she's a Sagittarius. Okay, that's very good. But for her bio, it says, as she grew up, Marin realized she became tired of pretending to be the shiny example to her ambitious father and little brother. Her mother was the only one to kind of understand her. She's not there anymore, though. Now Moran only wants to have fun. But for her little brother, as Freddie Jr. Wallace, he is just a regular child. He is technically an Aquarius. I am not. He has a C in public school, no private school, very little skills. But for his bio, it says... After his mother disappeared unexpectedly, Freddie isn't sure about his place in the world. Why would she leave them? When will she come back? He really misses her delicious spaghetti. Is that the only thing he misses? Not her warm hugs, her lovely kisses, but just her spaghetti? Honestly, I understand. You know, when your parents make that good old fashioned food, that's the stuff that you remember the most because your tummy was very, very happy. But I think I'm going to go over to the Greenberg family because their household is very interesting with all that going on with Amber and Rosa and her family and the child and old man Jack and the unexpected non-marriage birth. It, like Everything in that household is very interesting and I need to understand a little bit more about what's really going on. Now, personally, we could not end this video without introducing the Greenberg family, but overall, their home is very, very beautiful. It's a nice, big, grand farm style home. They have their main house over here, the little greenhouse on the side, and then a little barn that's more specifically just a garage 
for Amber to fix up her fixer upper car to sell or just to use for whatever reason. And then a little side workshop where we can do some working out, make some toys. And then there's a little photo <laughs> of Amber, the baby, and Rosa, their little relationship. That is so cute. I love these little photos and just seeing them all around the house on how every sim is like connected and how put together they are or torn apart they are. It's just so beautiful and Amber looks amazing. She kind of reminds me of Brandy Broke a little bit. I don't know why it might be the hair. It just might be the clothing, but I don't know. I even love their little garden in the back. However, their plants are not doing so well. They're all very sickly. They got some peppers, strawberries, cucumbers, and tomatoes tomatoes. Something I've always wanted to do in The Sims 2 is actually be a farmer and see how much I can grow my produce and sell for how much, but just be a general farmer because I'm in my Stardew Valley era and I really want to be a farmer so badly that I just might do it in The Sims 2 just to see what I could do and just have fun with it basically. But their home itself is just so nice and homey. We have Whitland Greenberg, we have Amila Greenberg, we also have uh, Rosa Greenberg, who's actually upstairs over here, and then the little baby, Lewis Clark. Now, their home consists of five Sims and a dog, and their dog's name is Loki Greenberg. And Loki reminds me of Loki, the TV show, and Loki from Marvel, Cinematic Universe, you know, that Loki. But their home downstairs, like I said, is very homey. We It's very open with their living room, dining room, and also kitchen. We have their foyer area. We have their extra dining room. We have their bathroom, a little office over here. Oh, a painting and pottery room, which I'm assuming that's probably for one of the other Sims. I mean, for Amber or Mila or the other Sims here. But upstairs, we have Lewis's bedroom since he's a toddler of the family. And he's just so dang cute. Like, look at him. He got a little frog hat blonde hair, green eyes, and just so a cutie patootie, just gonna eat them up. But it's just so cute that they have a toddler in the home so they can teach him how to walk, talk, you know, nursery rhymes, and also leave these little toys here for the xylophone and the pegboard. They even have a little hamster here that has nothing in it, but they can buy a hamster if they want to. We have the bathroom that they share with another baby that I don't know why. Is someone pregnant in this household that we do not know of? Are they having another baby? I don't know why, but I'm really interested in knowing more about this. And then this actually might be the grandparents' bedroom where Amila and William sleep in. This might be their bedroom, but this is a cute little photo of Loki and Lewis, double L, Loki and Lewis. So this might be actually Amber and Rosa's bedroom. And then over here might be Amila and William's bedroom, since this is technically their photo on the desk of them dancing. Oh, that's so cute. But it's so nice to see the home all like come together, wrapped into one of five Sims and a dog. But William, he's a retired elementary school teacher at level four, which I think is very cool. And then Amila is a retired souvenir whittler at level three. She has a talent badge in pottery and William has a talent badge in gardening and a bronze badge in fishing, which I think is very, very nice. As for Amber, she has a talent badge in toy making, level two of the gas station attendant. Rosa is level two as a drive through clerk, no talent badges. And of course, little tot tot toddler here. However, this toddler hasn't learned a lot of skills when it comes to like potty training or walking or talking. So they're really in their infancy of living. And as for the family tree, of course, Amber's brother is Cason Clark. He has two kids named Villarin Sanders and Lydia Sanders. And they live on the other side of town. But here's the twist. Their mother is Arabella Sanders. Arabella got broken up by Cason Clark. He left her to a younger, more attractive woman that we do not know. And that's not good at all. So she's left with two rebellious wannabe teens in her own home and is struggling day in and day out. And these two teens could have no care in the world. But for Amber, since she's in a relationship with Miss Old Rosa Greenberg, 
her family tree is just her two parents and then of course her grandparents she's the only child has no other siblings it's just her living by her lonesome and i just love how each and every sim is so interesting based on the relationship zodiac signs and also all their bios but i want to read more about amber's bio because she's here because she got kicked out of her father's house so for her simple simple bio it says amber has always found a lot of joy in being close to sims she found attractive she was so happy to be invited to move in with her girlfriend after after last night with her father. Now having baby Lewis with her equips her with more responsibility. Where is the time to have some fun? She does have feelings for Rosa, but she really just wants to hang out with other hot Sims again, which I find quite crazy. Miss Ma'am, new baby, new relationship, new home. If you wreck that, you might get kicked out again and live on the street, and who knows where Lewis might be. But this is very interesting for Amber Clark. She has a fear of getting engaged to Rosa but wants to be best friends with Delia, who she finds very attractive, and that concerns me. But for Rosa, she has a want to be engaged to Amber, but has a fear of being rejected from engagement by Amber, and that's not good. But for her bio, it says, Rosa's childhood was the happiest she could ever imagine, and she wishes to provide the same comfort for her family in the future. She loves hanging out around in the kitchen, experimenting with cuisine. Recently, she started dreaming about opening a tiny bakery of her own. Wait, that's so nice. I do hope that she eventually achieves that dream because I want to play in this neighborhood and like see what I can do to get things back where they should be, but also uncover the truth of where that missing lady is at because something's not right about this neighborhood and I do not like it. But for Lewis's bio, he probably has nothing. He's a Leo, but for his bio, it says little Leo loves being played with and having so much fun with his new family. Rosa is so lovely and feels like a mother to him. He just wishes he could get that close to his real mama too. Oh, oh my goodness. Really good friends and best friends with Rosa, but not really with his real mother or father or his grandfather. Oh, this is so sad. Oh, but what about the, you know, the new Greenberg, Amila Greenberg, despises Jack Clark, really is good friends with Amber and of course her husband and her, her daughter and newfound, you know, grandson-in-law, I guess. I don't know. But for her general bio, it reads, Amila is living her dream, getting old with her beloved husband and surrounded by family. She can't wait to see her daughter Rosa enlarging the family with her new girlfriend. It's been so nice having Amber and little Louis around, but it's time for Amila to meet her grandchildren. Oh, that's so nice. And she's so cute too. I like her outfit as well. Very, very fashionable. But then dear old William, Mr. Cancer here with his zodiac sign, his bio says... Born in the rural side of town, William always loved being surrounded by nature. He's very excited to see his daughter and her girlfriend enjoy the lifestyle as well. William could spend hours and hours in his garden smelling the flowers he grew by himself. And honestly, that checks out. That makes a lot of sense. He is, you know, a handyman, green thumb, always loved being outside, seeing what he can plant, grow, and also sell for the family down the line. But the thing is, though, he has a one of a relative of getting engaged, pretty much his own daughter to get engaged to Miss Amber here, alongside with Amelia. She wants her own daughter to get engaged as well, but Amber doesn't want commitment at all. Will they get engaged or will they break up all together and the whole family is in shambles? But let me know in the comments below of what do you think of this neighborhood made by the nerd Mead on Mod The Sims? Because I'm telling you, these neighborhoods that I have found thus far are fantastic and they just get better and better and better. And I just don't know where the end will be, but I hope it does not end. But with all that being said, I do hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below as always of what do you think of this neighborhood in The Sims 2, especially if you wanna see some videos around it here and there. And if you have any other suggestions about Sims 2 videos you wanna see on the channel, please let me know in the comments below but as always i hope you all enjoyed it go ahead and like comment and subscribe and i will see you all next time dag dag or goodbye <laughs>